Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. We've got a great show in store for you this week and it's all about the east side of the state. We're gonna start out up on Saginaw Bay. We'll take you out chasing after some walleyes with a group of ladies who's learning a lot more about the sport. You won't wanna miss that story. Then we'll head to Lake St. Clair for some of that world-class bass fishing. We had a great time out on the water that day. We're gonna wrap up this week's show by taking a look at what one farmer is doing here in the southeast part of the state to kind of curb the deer population and the damage it's doing on his crops. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jenny Silek, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. How's it going? Good. What, uh, whose idea was this, taking out a boat full of ladies? Well, it's never been a bad thing. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They've been working hard in the office. We thought we'd get them out and have a little fun here. So we'll go out and see if we can put a couple fish in the cooler. Hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> Looks like Mother Nature is going to give us a little break before the wind kicks up, so we'll see what we can make happen. All right. Do you have a go-to spot we're heading to? Mm, not really. Face straight out. There's a little waypoint we hit the other day. We'll try that and if nothing happens, we'll pick up and move. We can move pretty quick with this here rig. Yeah, what are we in? Uh, 29 foot trophy with twin 250s on the back. We just put them on last year. Boy, this year are sweet. They run a lot quieter than the old ones and uh, a little more power so we can get to getting. <laughs> I bought four flicker sheds, different colors. So the girls can all pick one and whoever catches the most fish on their lure, they get to buy lunch today. <laughs> uh, we'll just call it a open air team builder. A phrase I learned from one of my friends here. Got the girls out of the office, they got their work caught up and thought we'd just get out here and spend a nice day on the boat, you know. They, you know, they see all these things, they enter all these products, they go past them and sometimes they want, don't, want, don't know what they're handling. So I brought them out here to show them what a planer board does, how a level one reel works, what lead core is, you know, the different lures, things like that, and uh, how to run it. So just, uh, you know, learn a few things and spending a day on the water, get them out of the office. If you look, if you look in the back, there's a little, a little pin inside there, and the line has to go behind that pin. Do you see that pin? There's a little pin. It has to go behind there so we don't lose the board, okay? So, I'd like to take the front and put it in the, there's no pin in the front. 
then the front release. And I put it in there about halfway. That way I can pull it if I want. And then you just need to pick up a little bit of slack and put it behind the pin. There. That way the slack lets the board work and the fish bites the flag goes down. These ladies all work together in the receiving department at Frank's Great Outdoors and they see a lot of different products come through their office. Today was a great opportunity to see some of those fishing products in action out here on Saginaw Bay. Cheryl Vance was having fun with her co-workers and learning a lot on the trip so far today. A lot of wind. Uh, we caught a few fish but they were little. So we're hoping for bigger fish. We're going to keep trying. We're closer to shore and the wind seems the waves aren't so bad up here, so we're hoping that it will help us. The wind and the walleye bite were picking up in late morning, and the ladies were enjoying the camaraderie with coworkers out here on the bay. Do you get to do this kind of thing very often? Um, not too often, but Andy's working on getting uh, the crew out more to learn more about our products. And obviously, the guys are more fishermen and more savvy at this than we are. And it's very, we learn a lot out here. Andy's very knowledgeable. Andy has been chasing walleyes on Saginaw Bay his whole life and loves the challenge of the changing conditions out here. The extreme fluctuation in temperature here in early summer has been crazy. Yeah, it's starting to heat up. Finally got summer here all, all at once. You know, went from 70 to 110 degrees, you know, all in six hours, it seems like. And so that heat's going to drive them fish out a little deeper, you know. So, yeah, as, the, as it gets warmer, them fish go to deeper water, that's where they'll be. But uh, we're just kind of in between right now, seeing what happens. There's guys all over, some guys on the east side of the channel doing good over there and then we're some guys down here towards the crib there's guys up towards the Saginaw bar pink hunting bar getting fish so that's it's all happening you know it should, should set up pretty pretty well for the next few weeks here all right Woo! nice fish <laughs> It's always great to see how ladies cheer each other on in any outdoor success they achieve. Lainey hauled in the next walleye and Tony spotted another planer board out of line. Walligator. Well, we thought Mother Nature would be a little nicer today, but uh, she reared her ugly head and it's blown out of the west pretty good gust of 30, so we come up a little closer to shore. Hoping we might run over a couple of dumb ones up here, you never know. So we're just giving the world a different spot where it's not so bumpy. Ouch. Yeah. Damn. Holy moly. Wow. Oh, that's my a God. Woo. And you yeah. saw that planer board go off. Tony boated a beautiful fish and Cheryl was fighting in another one. Andy has a passion for fishing and enjoys taking others out any chance he has. Yeah, we were out last Sunday for the Walleyes for Warriors thing, which is an awesome event. We we put a few fish in the boat for the guys had a good day and we just got fishing this uh, one little spot that we caught fish last time a little closer to shore where the waves aren't so bad and uh, see if we can make something happen you know just running a few flicker shads and flick, flicker minnows anywhere from 40 to 70 foot back and uh, hoping we get a nibble here Nice Mine was a catfish. So we threw that one back. But Tony had a very nice walleye. It was a good one. Very, very nice. How exciting. Very good job. <laughs> You'll regret that. So what did you ladies think of the day? It was awesome. It was a blast. It was we a had good, good morning. Yeah. Andy was great. He's a very good teacher. He knows the stuff. Yeah, learned quite a bit. So what did you learn? What was something that surprised you today that you didn't know? Uh, I've never used a planer board, so yeah. learning how to watch and how to tell when there's a fish was good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And did your baits work like you thought they were going to? No. Oh, mine did. Good. <laughs> Thanks, well, Cheryl. Some, yeah. <laughs> Half awesome. of them worked. Flicker minnows were good, too. Yeah. They did a good job. So who got the biggest fish? Uh, I reeled the biggest one yes. in. <laughs> All right, awesome. Cheryl bought my lure though, so thank you. <laughs> Tony buys lunch. <laughs> what a perfect day on the water. The wind didn't cooperate, but the fish sure did. It's great to see more women embracing the different styles of fishing and loving what they do. Special thanks to Captain Andy Gorski for helping keep that passion alive and well here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
We are so fortunate here in our great state of Michigan to have one of the world-class bass fisheries in our own backyards. In this next story, we're gonna head out on Lake St. Clair for an afternoon of bass fishing. We kinda had to dodge a couple of storms, but we were able to get into some fish. Well, it's jobby nooner today, but we're going smallmouth fishing. So, for anybody that doesn't know, jobby nooner is the skip day for any of the, for just about anybody in the free boating world nowadays, but it started way back. Lake St. Clair has a party area that's quite much like uh, Mardi Gras, if you will, on the, on the fresh water. So we're gonna avoid that area entirely, and we're gonna stick to some nice smallie areas. And I was out walleye fishing this morning. We did really, really well, but smallmouth season, the catch and keep season, just opened up last weekend. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna throw some artificial baits with one of my good buddies, Mark Modrak, a uh, fellow pro staffer at Rose Marine, and we're gonna go throw some artificial baits. Something not very typical for this guy because I usually use shiners and live bait, which is old school. It's something I love doing, but um, we'll see if Bass Pro uh, teaches me a couple of lessons. So, you know, of course, we're going to pinch this in at a quick, quick little get after them, uh, land as many as we can because we're faced with some pretty adverse conditions. We got some storm conditions coming in, probably about eight, nine o'clock. Hopefully, they push a little south from us, but uh, we're hoping that because we got a little knowledge on this lake, a little insider knowledge because we grew up here that we can get a, uh, Jenny on some smallies here pretty quickly. Joel and Mark were up for the challenge of squeezing in a last minute fishing trip out here on Lake St. Clair. We headed out to the flats in a shallow area of Goose Bay and the first spot the guys fished wasn't producing so they wasted no time moving on. Mark brought along his own GPS information with some areas that worked for him last weekend during a tournament, so they picked up and headed there. Mark talked about what the smallmouth are doing this time of year. Right now, like Joel said, the fish are coming off to spawn. They're leaving, the, they're leaving their spawning flats, and now they're moving back out to feed. You know, while they're on the beds, they, they don't really eat much. You know, about the only thing they eat is something that comes in to disturb the eggs. So. Now they're, they're done with that. The, the females and the males are moving off the beds. They're coming out to the breaks in the river, breaks in the lake, and then they start getting on the feed. So we're right in that little transition period where the fish are just starting to move. So probably another week ago, you know, week or so, you know, they'll be out on the, on the, on the breaks. You'll be able to catch them on jerk baits, swim baits, tubes, and uh, you know, the fishing will get a little bit better. That area is, is a, big spawning flat and the rock bass usually move in after the smallmouth move out and they're either there to either use the beds because they're they're lazy they're not going to use the same bit you know they don't want to build it if somebody else already did it they're going to move in so uh, or they're in there to eat eggs or fry. The guys were doing well finding the smallies in this more challenging transition period the fish are in right now. They were throwing tube jigs, swim baits, and some small Ned rigs out here, and were having a blast connecting with some feisty fish. That's a little guy, but that's the future. You know, these are good, healthy fish. So, a couple more years, it'll be a three pounder. Okay. What is it about smallmouth? Oh, uh, it's the fight. They, they're, when they, usually when they hit, they're so vicious, it's, it's, uh, you know, they fight harder, you know, pound per pound more than any other game fish out there. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, people ask me that all the time. You know, well, why do you like it? It's, it's hard to explain. It's like, it's like anything else, you know, it's when it's a passion, you love to do it. You know, like Joel says, you know, fish tournaments, fish all the time. You, you just, you can never get enough of it. It's just been, something I've always liked to do and there's there's nothing better than when you get to tug you get a tug on the end of that line and you get to set the hook and uh, it's uh, you know Lake St. Clair is is by far the best lake in the country for a three to five pound smallmouth. It's fun to watch anglers who have such a passion for one particular species of fish. It never seems to matter if the fish are big or small they're just excited to connect with them. Mark offered a great tip for catching more smallmouth. Uh, a lot of people, they make a mistake, they get bit, and they set the hook too soon. On a swim bait, what happens is the bass is usually gonna come up, grab it, and then try to gulp it again. Well, you'll feel that first initial bite, and they set the hook, and they end up 
pulling the bait out of their mouth. So usually what I like to do, count in my head, you know, like to three and then set the hook. So, but uh, that we're doing this on uh, bait casting tackle and uh, it's got 12 pound test line on it. It's fluorocarbon and uh, it's uh, pretty good, pretty good tactic for out here. Oh, nice dark smallie. Great one. Wow, what a cool looking fish. That big smallmouth we caught, you, you notice it was really dark. I've always been told that the uh, dark, the darker they are means they're more of a, a resident fish. So they're not like a big schooling fish where they're out roaming. They basically stay in one spot. And then once they turn in, like this is shallow here. And that dark, when they turn dark, they can absorb more sunlight. So they, it keeps them warm, keeps them active, you know. So that's my thought. Could be wrong. <laughs> Great color. Beautiful awesome. fish. That's got to be a 19, 20 inch fish. I see that. That's oh, what we came here for. Yeah. How gorgeous. So pow powerful. Look at the tail, so thick. Just these things, they live in this current. This is a awesome fish. Awesome fish. It looks so dark. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, a Canadian lake fish. Yeah. A gorgeous fish indeed. Joel has been fishing here his whole life and has an undying passion for Lake St. Clair and the St. Clair River. This whole area in the St. Clair Flats is so unique. The adversity of the fishery, the types of fish that we're able to catch, I love it. I'm very fortunate to have grown up here just on the other side on Little Muscamute on Harsons Island and have been able to experience so many great things on the lake. Absolutely incredible. The fishery here on Lake St. Clair is world class. If you're looking for a fun adventure this summer, be sure to include this amazing water wonderland in your plans. It's a beautiful place that never disappoints, and it's right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. There seems to be an age-old battle between crop farmers and deer here in Michigan. The deer are trying to eat the crops as fast as they can, and the farmers are trying to keep the deer from doing just that. In this next story, we're going to check out what one farmer in St. Clair County is doing to try to curb that deer population. Since 1857, the Doss family here in St. Clair County has been farming. Al Doss and his son Matt are the fifth and sixth generation of Dosses working this land, and they make a living growing corn and soybeans, about 1,500 acres to be exact. Even with a huge number of hunters in the area, the deer population is growing every year. I spent a day with Al recently, and he walked me through the damage deer can do to these crops. The corn supposedly wouldn't be hurt as bad because the growing point's far enough under the ground uh, that when they eat that off, it doesn't bother it. But for some reason this year, once the corn got up a little bit taller, they've been eating the top of the corn and they're chewing the tops of the ears off, and which in turn are turning moldy. So now we've got to deal with the mold in uh, the combine or when we're combining the corn because that mold's going to start getting in there and stuff. As far as the beans are concerned, when they're young, they seem like the younger they are, the more they like to be into them. And once they mow them down and chew them off to the ground, they don't come back and that. But they're still even on the mature beans where they're at, at this stage of the game. Uh, they're eating more of the, the branches and the foliage off the top of them. And there's any, any given evening, you can see 20 to 30 deer in a bean field chewing on them. We're seeing a lot less numbers this year just for the reason the corn, there's, we've got a lot of corn here. There's 120 acres of corn on here and they like to hide in the corn. But any time you go around the edges of the fields, you can see damage. So the damage in the fields could be even greater once you get inside the fields and stuff. The hail damage we've got the other day destroyed the, the leaf that comes right out next to the ear. And when that gets destroyed, then the ear suffers and doesn't fill out. And that's what the deer have been doing also, is eating that whirl or that, uh, that last leaf that comes out next to the corn. And then that ends up destroying or the ear becomes substantially smaller and doesn't fill out properly and stuff. Al set out for an evening hunt with his crop damage permits. Most of the deer are hanging out in the tall corn this time of year, so Al headed to a blind in a bean field in hopes of seeing a couple of mature does without fawns to fill his permits. We work every year with the uh, DNR and we get crop damage permits. 
uh, this area has a lot of uh, deer population into it, and there is an awful lot of hunters out here. So it's not a lack of hunters, it's just there's it's just a ton of deer. Every evening we go out and we can count all the does have twins out here. So, you know, the numbers keep increasing. And they have evidently, they've got to figure it out where to hide when deer season starts because to see any is tough. So that's, uh, that's the reason we're trying to take care of a few of them during this, this time of the year is to get, uh, get the, the damage down on the crops. We were managing to see a few does and fawns feeding through the beans here, but Al let them pass in hopes of finding a single doe. We have five tags now, and uh, them five deer aren't going to make a large difference here, but every deer we take off should help on the bottom line in that, and uh, the income of the farm and stuff should be helped a little bit by doing this. Normally we're at 200 or plus bushels per acre on corn, and the deer can knock that down by 50 bushels easy just by the damage they're doing on the tops of the ears and chewing the ears and stuff like that because once they do that the growth stops. So the damage with the damage and stuff that we're getting from that if we have if we're running 200 bushel corn and we're starting to lose 50 bushel out of that 200 you know we're losing $150 an acre easily just by the deer damage that we're getting onto it. If you stretch that over 500 acres of corn in that we're uh, talking a lot of a lot of loss in the bottom line. As far as the beans are concerned, same, pretty much the same type of loss onto them. We're talking 50 to 60 bushel beans, and then you know if they take 10 bushel out at a, an acre, that's going to be quite the loss too. You know, you're talking 80 dollars an acre, anyways, that you can lose on that also. So it's uh, it's substantial. Al was watching a single doe working her way toward us and had his sights set on using one of his DNR crop damage permits to take her out of the herd. The DNR has been great to work with as far as uh, getting us permits and stuff to try to manage some of the deer population in this area and that, so they do a good job. We get some permits and we don't get a lot. We get, you know, we've got five permits and if we do fill them, we can get five more to uh, fill, you know, try to fill them also. but. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. They're, they're, still, they're still scared of people and they're still hard to get close enough to to try to fill. And that is not, uh, not that simple. Nice shooting. Okay, that's good. <laughs> How far do you think that doe was? Oh, I'd say probably at least uh, 75 yards, 80 yards. Okay. And that, we're at uh, shooting for crop damage. She's a little bean eater, as bean you call Bean eater, yeah. Long neck bean eater. <laughs> That's what that was. All right. We're trying to uh, eliminate a few of them out here. We have one back behind us right now, over that direction. We've got a little bit more daylight left, so we're going to see if we can't get another one out of these fields. We're ready for the next one. <laughs> if any more come out. We've seen a few tonight, but they haven't cooperated. We didn't see any more deer tonight, so at dark, Al set out to retrieve his doe. The Dawes family takes these crop damage harvested deer to a local processor, and the meat is donated to Sportsmen Against Hunger. Nothing goes to waste. Oh, there she is. Yeah. There she is. Nice mature doe. Yeah. Full mature doe. So how many beans do you think you saved, or corn, or whatever? Beans, yes. Quite a few. She, uh... She can eat a lot of them, she can in an evening. Farmers here in Michigan keep America fed in more ways than one. The crops they grow and harvest put food on all our tables, and those who donate their crop damage harvests help stock the shelves at food kitchens across the state. Special thanks to the Doss family and all the hardworking farmers here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned 
In upcoming weeks, we've got all sorts of fun headed your way. We'll take you up to the UP for some adventures there. We'll show you some lure making, and we'll head to Lake Huron for some of that big lake fishing that happens over there. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Our website is michigandoutofdoorstv.com, and we are on most all social media platforms as well. If we don't see you on the water or out in the woods, we'll see you right here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love